Welcome back, people. Um, slightly s different today. Uh, as you can see, there's quite like, a few floating boxes uh, moving about. And I've been working on like, animation and collision detection. So, as you can see, for example, here, I try to move through the box, but I can't. You know, if I move like, alongside it. Um, so, yeah, I've been working on collision detection to make sure that, you know, in the game world, you can't just like move through um, through objects because it would be like a bad thing to uh, to make that happen. Um, there's one thing I've did, and the other thing I've done as well is I want to look if you can actually make the player um, jump on top of a box, say for example this one, and move along with the box, which as you can see is totally possible at the moment, which is quite cool. I want to move from box to box. So we can jump on this one here. Yes, we can. So as you can see, the player currently moves uh, with the box um, and basically goes in the same direction the box uh, goes and can basically jump from box to box and from box to another box to make that uh, to make that happen. Um, so in order to do all these things, um, first of all, I'll explain the collision detection. Uh, all these boxes here are bounded boxes. So it means they're represented by six planes, um, one for each side of the, of the, of the cube, obviously. Um, and the player itself is also a represented by a box. Uh, so then to check whether or not the player uh, collides with a box, uh, every time the player moves or the box moves, um, I make one of them uh, basically cast uh, eight lines from every corner of the box towards the, the points where the box or where the player is moving towards. And then I check for every other object in the uh, scene. Like, does any of these lines intersect with any of the planes rep represented by any of these, uh, the bound box or all these boxes or the player? Uh, if that is the case and they do collide, um, then the player basically stops moving. Or if the player is like, a, basically if the player collects with the top of one of these boxes, then the player, uh, then basically update is in such a way that like the player moves with the box. So I'll talk about, about that like in a second. Uh, but when it comes to like, collision detection, uh, so let's say the player casts like eight lines, and I then check, for example, this box that does intersect with like, the plane I'm currently looking looking at, yes or no. So could I come through it until it's like yeah too low? Can I scan me through it? Um, so I cast eight lines, then check intersection between the lines and the plane uh, like in front of uh, in front of me. Um, so line and plane section are not that difficult. You get like a point which represents a point on the plane, but then you need to decide, well, is a point within this bounded, uh, bound like uh, square, or does lie outside of it. Uh, in order to do that, what I've done is I create four vectors, one uh, basically from every corner of this uh, square to every aligned corner, and make sure all of them go, say, anti-clockwise. So then when I get like my points, which the intersection of the line with the plane, I then check the cross the calculate pro cross product between every vector which goes from corner to corner on the on the square to a vector from the uh, beginning of that vector to or to give each vector to the point. And if the signs of that cross vector are the same of every uh, cross product of every vector, then I know that the point is inside the box. If not, it's outside the box. This means I can basically move like, you know, outside the box and like, jump over the box uh, but and the box can't move through the box and that's essentially what you want. So that's collision detection which is fairly like you know not very uh, expensive computationally. Um, then the next thing is how do I make the player move with the boxes and that is that is accomplished by uh, using a scene graph or which is essentially a tree. Uh, and every object in the scene, so the train, the player, the boxes, are a node in this, uh, this graph. And the node has got like parents and children. Uh, so currently if you look upstairs, like in the uh, top uh, top center of the, uh, of the screen, you see parent location indicator 000. And that is because the player currently is a, is a node which is a child of the train, and the train is currently a 000. Um, now the beauty is that as a player only need to track the local position of the player um, and I essentially add that to the global or the position of the parent and also the rotation all that uh, kind of stuff. 
So it means if the terrain would, would move, then all sort of player would move with the terrain, you wouldn't even notice the terrain is moving. Um, and the box would move as well, because all the boxes are also a child of, you know, of the uh, terrain. So when I jump on top of a box, what I need to do is to make the player a child node of the cube node. So if I jump on top of the box here, not inside the box, on top of the box, sorry, another one. Jump! Okay, so, so currently you see the parent location is flickering for a bit until we move into terrain and we base our back being a child of the uh, terrain node. Okay, let's go on top of here. So as you can see here, the parent location is now different because it's now represented by the location of the box. So the box location is minus 10 minus 3 and you see that the Y location dates up and down and changes as the box moves up, moves, moves up and down. Um, so all need to go, oops, I'm going through the terrain, so I'm going to what we want. Uh, so as the box moves, uh, the player basically gets updated and all you need to do is you keep track of the local position of the, of the player. So local position of the player now being on the train is essentially equal to like minus 16, 8, minus 14. Uh, but when I move on top of the box, I need to, to calculate the difference between the allocation of the, of the parents, so it's currently 0, 0, 0, and in this case the allocation of this, uh, this box I basically moved into. Um, and that will basically update the local position of the, of the player relative to like all these, uh, relative to like basically the parent it's, uh, it's currently part of, which is now the box. But if I move out, or like basically if I jump off again or like, you know, fall off the box, then the parent location gets like updated to the, uh, the parent location of the terrain. And then I need to calculate the difference between like the, the box location and the location where the parent is. And this setup actually makes things quite, quite nice because I could, for example, have a ball which rotates around every box you see here. And in order to do that, I, I basically have to uh, make the ball rotate around the, like its own axis. Uh, because when I make the ball a child of the, uh, of say, like one of these boxes, um, the ball basically gets like translate and rotate according to its parent, which is the box, which gets rotated and translated according to its parent, which is the terrain. So if the terrain moves, all the box move, I move. If I'm like on top of a box and the terrain moves and the box moves, uh, I only keep track of the local position of the player and all the other translation and rotations are basically essentially done for me. So it makes, at least uh, for programming, uh, loads of like animations, things quite simply simple. Because say the, say the terrain was basically rotating, I didn't then have to uh, calculate like the rotation of the terrain and the like translation of the box whenever I basically want to figure out where the player is. Uh, because it's basically done in like in a higher tier, so like the train keeps track of its own like rotation, and the play keeps uh, the box keeps track of like where it basically goes up and down, left and right, and as the play basically keeps track of like, where you're moving towards. So it makes things very simple to program and also very uh, elegant when you try to do stuff where you know basically like boxes, so you want basically jump from box to box to another box to back to train again. So yeah, I hope you hope this like this uh, demonstration. Um, so there's still like a few glitches to uh, figure out she might have uh, might have seen, but at least it's like at least an, an early attempt at uh, glitch detection. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, keep watching and more will come. Thank thanks, and I'll see you next time.